Good morning. Our reading is in the book of Jude, right before Revelation, little book of Jude. <clears throat> 25 verses. We're going to read that this morning. Okay, let's bow in prayer before we start. <clears throat> Holy Father, we come before you thanking you for our Lord Jesus Christ, his death, burial, resurrection on the cross, that we can <clears throat> have our sins all washed away in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and go to heaven. We thank you for being born of God, born again. We thank you, Father, for uh, salvation. We thank you for eternal life um, through our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that, Father, that you bless each one of us that are hearing the word this morning and um, over the uh, uh, on the on the message, Father, that you might bless it to our hearts and that we may grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We give you praise and honor, Father, for all things. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved and Jesus Christ and called mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not, and the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he had reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, does not, does not bring a, against him a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beast and those things, they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. These are spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch, also the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints, to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which they ungodly which ungodly sinners have spoken against him these are murmurers complainers walking after their own lust and their mouth speaketh great swelling words having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that 
they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And if some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, and dominion, and power, both now and, and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Okay, flip, o, flip a page or two over to Revelation 2. <clears throat> you know, there's seven churches that we're going through here in uh, chapter 2 and 3. And uh, we're finishing up on the third church, which was, um, <clears throat> um, that church was called uh, Pergamos. And, and so uh, we're seeing in these churches that uh, God has given us insight into the great tribulation of how the churches in the land will, will be. They'll leave their first love. Um, they'll hold to the doctrines of uh, Balaam or the doctrines of the Nicolaitans, which doctrines the Lord hates. And these are doctrines of demons as we read in first Timothy. And so they're getting away from the the truth of God's word, and uh, and remember it says that these that Satan as seat is there. See, in in uh, chapter two verse thirteen, I know thy works where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. See, and so this is the nature of the great tribulation where Satan is taking his seat in the churches, and this is why you don't uh, have the truth being brought forth because Satan is deceiving those ministers and those pastors that they're, they're holding to doctrines of the Nicolaitans and the doctrines of Balaam, okay? Now, we're going to have more of this type of language uh, when we start uh, Thyatira uh, in verse 18. So let's go over to chapter 2. And look at verse 18, and it says, And unto the angel or messenger of the church of Thyatira, write, These things said the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto flame of fire, and his feet are like, a, like fine brass. Now, um, if you've taken notes, we've already worked with this language, see? If you go over to chapter 1, um, look at 14 and 15. Uh, it's talking about the Son of Man. It's the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. And 14, his head and his hairs were white like wool, his, <clears throat> as white as snow. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And 15, and his feet like unto fine brass as they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. So we already worked with, with, uh, with this language, but uh, we'll go over it uh, briefly again. Uh, what does it mean, who have his eyes like unto a flame of fire? Well, go to Luke 11. Uh, the Bible says, uh, if our eye, <clears throat> look at Luke 11, verse 34. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thy eye is single, and that Greek word, it means clear. So if your eye is clear, thy whole body is full of light. And so right there, we know that Christ is full of light. Christ, his eyes are clear. His eyes 
are like a flame of fire, see, uh, full of light. But when thy eye is evil, thy body is full of darkness. But we know Christ, God himself, is full of light. So when it says his, who have his eyes like unto a flame of fire, uh, that word flame, it means uh, flash, flame, or blaze. And let me show you where it's used. Acts, look at Acts chapter 7, verse 30. <clears throat> <clears throat> Acts 7, verse 30. <clears throat> and when uh, 40 years were expired, there appeared to him, it's talking about Moses, there appeared to him Moses in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. And that word flame is the same word over there his eyes like to a flame of fire and here it's it's uh uh the lord appeared to uh him in a flame of fire in a bush see and so his eyes were as a flame of fire uh the bush was a flame of fire uh, this is god himself of course that that's in the bush he says i am the god of abraham the god of isaac the god of jacob if you go over to Exodus, uh, you can read that. Um, and so uh, this angel of the Lord is God himself. But here it says uh, in a flame of fire, in a bush, see? And so Christ is the light and he's the flame of fire. It's also in, in uh, Hebrews chapter one, look at verse seven, this word uh, flame. Hebrews 1, look at verse 7. <clears throat> okay, there it says, <clears throat> Hebrews 1, 7. And of the angels, he said, who maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. See? So notice how God uses that flame of fire uh, his eyes were a flame of fire the bush was a flame of fire the ministers are a flame of fire see the messengers it's the light of the gospel his ministers are bringing the light of the gospel because god is in us see and so we know fire uh, uh if you go to jeremiah 23 fire is likened unto the word of god uh, and so Jeremiah 23, look at verse 29, 23, 29 <clears throat> is not my word like as a fire said the Lord and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. So his word is like a fire. So can you see his eyes? are clear his eyes are pure christ is the word of god christ is the light of the gospel see so when it says his eyes like unto a flame of fire it's the light of the gospel okay and then it says his feet are like unto fine brass but the in revelation one it says um it says something else it's if you remember it says uh fine brass as they burned in a furnace okay so that takes in of course the cross that that um uh the furnace uh is a picture of the the wrath of god that christ took on our behalf see and it's uh remember his his uh um he was pierced through his hands and his feet. So his feet like unto a fine brass as they burned in a furnace, okay? And so he endured the wrath of God on behalf of all those in the book of life. And so, um, so we have to take that in consideration because um, in chapter two, it says his feet are like unto fine brass, but uh, 
verse 15 of chapter one says, as they burned in a furnace. So that takes in the cross because furnace has to do with uh, fire and hell. And so Christ went to the cross for the, uh, to, uh, for the sins of his people. He was made a curse for us. Go to Galatians. Look at Galatians chapter, uh, Galatians chapter three, and look at verse 13 there. Uh, Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. So, see, he became sin for us. And that's why you and I that are saved don't go to hell. Uh, we're not, we don't come under the judgment of God because it says there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ. Okay, so go back to Revelation 2. And to the angel or messenger of the church, uh, remember those angels uh, are pictures of God's elect. Uh, we're the messengers that bring the word of God. And if you recall that he, uh, he had the, the seven stars, which are in, in chapter 1, verse 20, the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, uh, the seven golden can the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. See, then we've seen that the stars are believers, and to be in the, the Lord Jesus' right hand is implying that we're under the power of God. Each one of us that are saved are messengers of God, that uh, we're under the power of God. Okay, and so we bring the message. Uh, from the word of God. So he's saying to the, unto the angels, uh, the angel of the church of this and that. And so they're bringing the truth of, uh, of, uh, of the word of God, which is teaching that during the great tribulation, that these churches are, are gone astray and they're, they've fallen away from the faith. Okay. And so now it uh, continues, uh, uh, this church of Thyatira, right? Uh, these things said the Son of God, verse 18 there, chapter 2, uh, who has his eyes. So Christ has eyes like a fl unto a flame of fire. He's the light of the gospel. And his feet are like fine brass because he, he, uh, he, was, he endured the wrath of God on our behalf. And... Uh, Verse 19 now, it says, notwithstanding, or 19, I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. So remember, in the, in the external church, you have uh, the wheat, you have the sheep, you have the elect. Uh, just like uh, the five wise virgins. And uh, remember, there's also the five foolish virgins there. So you're going to have some that he's speaking to that you know that's pointing to the elect. And then when he says you have there that whole them, see, like, look at chapter 2, verse 14. But I have a few things against thee because thou hast there them. See, in the external church that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. See, and, and verse 15, so has thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. So right within the external church, you have those that are saying that they're Christians, but, and we've already seen in verse two that they say they're apostles. And then in verse nine, nine, they say they're Jews. And remember the spiritual teaching 
is that they're saying that they're believers and they're not. And we, we showed you verses about the Jews and apostles that point to that these are believers, but these are people that say and they're Christians or uh, believers, but they're not, see? Uh, they're of the synagogue of Satan. They have gone after false doctrine, see? So these are the them in verse 14 that hold to the doctrine of Balaam. But when it talks about in 19, I know thy works and thy charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. <clears throat> He's talking to believers there, see? And um, uh, the believers are holding to the works uh, of the Lord, the ministry of the Lord. In fact, um, I'm going to give you the Greek on all these words here. First of all, the, that word works, in the Greek, it means to work or action. I know thy works or thy actions, see? And uh, then we'll go back and look at some verses. That word charity, it means, uh, in the Greek, it means love or affection, That word service uh, in the Greek, it means uh, aid or minister, ministering, service, ministering. Um, that word faith in the Greek, it means conviction or truth. Uh, the word patience in the Greek, it means cheerful, endurance, constant. That word, patience, cheerful, endurance, constant. <clears throat> and so he's saying there that all these things, and, and, that, and the other work is the same Greek word as the first one. <clears throat> and, so, um, <clears throat> and so let me show you uh, James 2, 14 through 18 on works. James chapter 2. Four, 14 through 18. Okay, James chapter 2. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he had faith and not works? Can that faith save him? <clears throat> If a brother or sister be, in, be in naked, now spiritually, uh, naked is sin. They're not clothed in Christ's righteousness. You, you have to look at the spiritual teaching. And destitute of daily food. Well, that's the gospel. Destitute of daily food. Give us this day our daily bread. So, uh, it, and it says one of you, Say unto them, depart in peace and be warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? In other words, you're not giving them the gospel so that they can be clothed in Christ's righteousness and be fed with the bread of, of from heaven. See? And so uh, that's why it says, not, notwithstanding, you give them not those things, see? So uh, it's saying if you don't have, if he has faith and not works, can that faith save him, see? So um, uh, verse 17 says, even so faith, if it have not works, is dead being alone. So we know that what this is teaching is that when we're saved, we're, we're going to be used by the Lord to share the gospel with other people. We're giving them those things that are needful for the body so that they can be clothed in Christ's righteousness and be fed with the gospel of Christ, see? But if, 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 if there's somebody that's not doesn't bring the gospel, doesn't share... The gospel, it's it says um, they have faith but not works, and then seventeen says 
even so faith if it have not works is dead being alone see so uh this is a, a picture here of the lord saying uh, our work uh is to be a witness for the lord it's to give them uh those things that are needful for the body and it says right there if they're naked or destitute of daily food and spiritually that's bringing the gospel uh to be clothed in salvation or and and be fed the word of god the gospel okay so this is why um the believer uh finds himself being a witness telling others about christ uh when you have an opportunity uh, of course you're going to witness to people and this is given your uh, uh given your bread to those that are in need and and um, those that are in their sins say okay so it says there faith without works is dead being alone see so he goes on and, and explains um uh, about uh, verse 18 yea a man may say thou hast faith and i have works show me thy faith without thy works and i'll show you the my faith by my works see and so uh when we're witnessing we're showing our faith by our works see and that's why god's using uh language about if somebody's naked or, or destitute of daily food uh, then he goes down look at verse uh, uh 19 thou believest that there is one god thou doest well the devils also believe in trouble but will thou but wilt thou know O vain man that faith without works is dead was not abraham our father justified by works when he offered isaac his son upon the altar seeing how faith wrought with his works and by works his faith was made perfect and the scriptures was fulfilled which said abraham believed god and it was imputed unto him for a righteousness for he was called the friend of god see see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only likewise also was not rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and it sent them out another way for as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead also so there needs to accompany faith is 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 bringing the gospel that's what it's teaching here in james giving uh, uh clothing the naked and giving food to those that are uh, destitute of uh, uh food it says in verse 15 see so when you have an opportunity share the gospel that's the work and that that it says i'll show you my faith by my work see and so um uh that's covers that now go back to revelation i know thy works and then next one is charity go to first corinthians 13. <clears throat> Look at verse uh, four. This is the word charity. First Corinthians 13. Okay, look, at, I'm gonna read uh, uh, four through seven. Charity suffereth long, and that word charity is the word love or affection. Love suffereth long, and is kind love envieth not uh charity or love vaunteth not itself it is not puffed up does not behave itself unseemly and that that word unseemly in the greek it means indecent it doesn't behave itself indecent seeketh not her own is not easily provoked you, you you don't get mad uh uh fly off the handle or a quick fuse they call it is not easily provoked thinketh no evil rejoiceth not in iniquity but rejoiceth in the truth 
beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. Okay? So uh, that's the same word, uh, charity. It means love or affection. And these are all things uh, that Christ, character, characteristics of Christ, suffereth long, kind, envieth not, is not puffed up, see, not full of pride, uh, does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, okay? This word provoked, uh, in, the, in the Greek, it means irritated, angry. It's not easily irritated. It's not easily angry. Don't have a temper. Uh, the, the Bible says, be slow to wrath and, and uh, don't have a temper. It's not easily provoked. So sheep are not easily irritated. Uh, uh, you ever see many sheep angry like a wolf? Uh, it's not easily irritated or angry, okay? So um, that word provoked, irritate or angry. So these are things that characteristics of Christ. And when Christ is in us, uh, we have a desire to witness. We have ch uh, charity, the love, uh, charity is in us, Christ is in us, love, and those are the characteristics I mentioned, okay? The next one uh, is, is service, which is ministering. Um, go to 2 Corinthians 8, 4. Second Corinthians 8 verse 4, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering of the saints. And so uh, that's the word service. It's right there. The service of the saints or ministering to the saints. Say. And so God uses us in his kingdom to be a minister and uh, one of the ministries is ministering to the saints, say, uh, feeding them the bread of life and uh, praying for them uh, and whatever the Lord puts on your heart uh, to do for the saints, okay? And so that, that's the word ministering. Um, look at uh, chapter uh, one of Hebrews 13 and 14. Chapter 1, 13 and 14. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering? That's the word service. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Now, we're liken uh, these angels are pictures of believers and and you know we're min you, we're you and i are ministering spirits see and uh we're sent forth to minister for them the elect who shall be heirs of salvation and uh if you read the bible uh, the spirit uh told philip to go up and speak to that ethiopian Ethiopian eunuch. He was one of God's elect. So God uses us in this life to for us to talk to people about Christ, invite them to fellowship, um, bring the gospel to, to the lost, see? Uh, give, deal your bread to the hungry, the Bible says. And so we're ministering spirits, see? And, and we worship God in our spirit. And so uh, God will use us to, to minister to those that it could be your, your son, your daughter, your, your wife, your grandmother, your grandfather, your neighbor, whatever it is, the Lord's using you uh, to bring his elect 
into salvation. See? So he uses us to bring the word of God. Uh, and that's why um, it says there, service, we're ministers. And so we're used by God to, to do these things when we're, uh, we're, on, we're on this earth. We're ministering spirits, see? And so God, uh, we worship Christ in our spirit. That's what's been born again, our spirit. And that's what God uses when we're saved to minister to them who shall be heirs. And that, that of course, is the elect. So we don't know who the elect are. So uh, as we invite people to fellowship and uh, we witness to people uh, and we see that they're taking in the word, Perhaps they're one of God's elect, and, and now they're going to be used to share the gospel to others, see? And so uh, this is how God uses to bring his elect into salvation. He uses the church. He uses us to go forth, and that's why it says faith without works is dead. So we give the, hung, uh, the bread to the hungry, see? And... Uh, um, now, the next one is faith. Uh, go to uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, 4 through 9. First Corinthians 12, 4 through 9. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministrations, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operations, but is the same God which worketh all and all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit withal. For to one is given by the spirit, the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit, to the nether gifts of healing by the same spirit. So there's faith. Faith is a gift that comes from the Lord. See, it says right there, to another faith by the same spirit. See? So there's, there's uh, diversities of operations, but the same God which worketh all in all. And so um, Christ, it's Christ faith. Go to Galatians. It'll say it in Galatians chapter 2. Look at verse 16. Galatians 2, 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. It's his faith. That's why it, he gives it to us. When Christ is in us, it's... It's the same as him giving us the faith of Christ when the Holy Spirit is in us. So by faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So faith is a gift. It has to be given to you and when Christ comes into us, or you've been given that new heart, that's the, that's the same as being saved or the faith of Christ or being born of God, okay? Now, let's look at the last one, patience. And remember that word meant cheerful, endurance, constant. And remember, the believers endure to the end. Uh, go to Hebrews chapter 12, look at verse 1. When we're saved, we, we fight the good fight. We, we finish the course. And uh, we don't drop out of the race. We don't, we don't uh, uh, take our eyes off of Christ. We keep, we keep running the race of salvation. Like Paul says, I finished the course. I kept the faith, see? And so don't drop out of the race. Uh, and... and uh, um, be patient, endure to the end. That's what the Bible says. 
Look at chapter 12, look at verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, which is sin, and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience, endurance, see, the race that is set before us. Don't drop out, see, don't, don't keep, don't, keep your eyes looking to Jesus. It even says it, the next verse, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, see, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Okay? So uh, keep strong in the faith, endure to the end. Don't drop out of the race. Uh, endurance, patience means endurance. Okay? And every one of God's elect uh, will endure. Uh, go to Matthew 24. It even says, uh, it even says that. Look at Matthew 24. Look at verse 13. Matthew 24, 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. See? Endurance, patience. Keep your eyes on Christ. Don't remember Peter when, when he, the Lord said, come uh, on the water. And what happened to Peter? He sunk. He started sinking. He was looking all around. And the Lord had to, he had to yell, Lord, save me. And, uh, and he grabbed him uh, by the hand. And, and uh, uh, keep your eyes on Christ. Don't look around. You start sinking. And, uh, and so uh, keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus. Uh, endure to the end. All of God's elect will endure to the end. Guaranteed. Okay? Because we are chosen to be saved. Uh, and once the God is in us, it says uh, God is in us both to will and do of his good pleasure. So God is in us and... Uh, um, he takes care of us, and we look to Jesus, and we endure to the end, okay? And so go to 2 Peter chapter 1. Look, how, look at what he says here in, in verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 1, look at verse 3. According as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life. His divine power, when Christ is in us, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and to godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to the glory and virtue. Where, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. When Christ comes in us, the Holy Spirit, we're partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Now, these are all the the divine power or the uh, the characteristics that comes into us. So he's saying diligence is one. Add to your faith, virtue is another. To your virtue, knowledge. To your knowledge, temperance. To your temperance, patience. That's that word endurance. And to your patience, godliness. And to your godliness, brotherly kindness and to your brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now he says in verse nine, the person that lacketh these things, see, 
is blind and cannot see afar off and have forgotten that he was purged from his old, excuse me, his old sins. Wherefore, the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, you shall never fit, fall. Okay, so right there in that divine power that he's given us, that means the Holy Spirit is in us, Christ is in us, that divine nature, we have these characteristics like Christ has, diligence, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godly brother, uh, godliness, brotherly kindness. See? They're in us because Christ is in us, okay? And so uh, the, the person that doesn't have it in it, it in verse 9, it says he's blind. He's spiritually blinded, so he's not saved. So that's why... It says in verse 10, uh, wherefore, rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. See, if you do these things, you should never fall. Okay, so uh, I, I just gave you a rundown that these are pointing to the elect. And, and so he says the last to be more than the first. So uh, there's a growth. Go to, since we're in 2 Peter, look at 2 Peter 3. Remember, we start as, as newborn babes, but uh, we grow, see? 3.18, it says, but grow in grace and in knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Okay? Now, remember, the Lord... Uh, is the one that causes us to grow. And first, in Corinthians, he says, God gives the increase. One, one plants and other waters, but God gives the increase, see? We could have a garden, and we could water it, we could plant it, but we can't sit there and say, come on, tree, grow. Uh, God has to uh, give the growth, okay? And so um, each of us, that uh, that are in the word every day, taking in the, the bread, uh, feeding upon the word of God, uh, listening to Bible studies, taking in spiritual uh, uh, food, if you will. Uh, God will use that for you to grow in grace and in knowledge, see? If you don't read your Bible, uh, how are you going to grow every day? If you're not in fellowship, uh, Bible studies, uh, how are you going to grow? But if you're one of uh, his, God will have you listening to the word, and God will use that uh, to feed you, being nourished with the word. And, and so we're going to grow in grace and knowledge, okay? It says right there, grow in grace and knowledge. The Lord Jesus, uh, go to Luke. It says he grew in grace Look at uh, look at chapter two fifty two Luke two fifty two. Okay, Luke two fifty two. Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and man, and so increased so. We grow. Christ is in us. And, and, and uh, when Christ is in you, uh, you're going to grow in grace and knowledge, see? And so this is uh, 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 what the Bible teaches. So stay in the word. Uh, take these words and uh, hide them in your heart. Because uh, remember, I read you a couple weeks ago that wisdom is better than Let's finish uh, by reading that. Go to Proverbs, and we'll pick it up next time uh, in Revelation uh, 2.20. But um, go to Proverbs chapter uh, chapter 3.
Uh, look at, let's start with verse 11. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She's more precious than rubies, and all things that thou can desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She's a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. Okay? And so, uh, Lord willing, we'll pick it up uh, next week in verse 20.